do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Follows me in order. Let the record show that all commissioners present. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So next we have canvas and certify the election returns for special uh, SD19 uh, election on July 31st, 2018. Move. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any corrections or? If not, I. Can I say something? Yeah. I just wanted to point out that the early voting results were posted at 7:20 p.m. and election day results were posted at 7:51 p.m. Uh, what this end up costing us? <laughs> we're we're getting the bills page. now. <laughs> and um, we were told that the runoff will be not earlier than 70th day, not later than the 77th day from today that we're canvassing. However, to keep in mind that the governor did have special powers to call it earlier if he wants to. We're going to have another election and then a general election. Right. Correct. And it's going to cost us too. Yes. <laughs> and all we're going to get is good job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank All you right. very much. There's a motion and a second. Any corrections or a discussion? If not, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nobody. Aye. Zero. Five minutes. We have the approval of the minutes. We, we didn't have any. Okay. We probably have it for the next week. And no, no minutes to be approved. I move. No, no move. No. No, no, no move. move. <laughs> no, no move. No, no move. No, no move. No, no move. We also have citizens comments. Mr. Emily Grant, come on up. How are you all today? Good. <coughs> this is where you can't talk to me. Okay. So I'd like to um, thank the court and the judge for the support of the 4-H kickoff with the Middle Rio Grande Development Foundation grant. Um, I would like to ask the court to take the grant to the committee to ex to the grant review committee to accept that. I'll put it on the agenda. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Judge. Thanks, Judge. Okay. Five hundred. Yeah, I think I can't. It's five hundred dollars, and what it is is I know I can't discuss it, but I, I on the on the I let, uh, judge's comments. I could say that. Uh, what it is, is every year the Mineral Grand has a golf tournament, and it's a foundation to improve kids. I've played on it every year for the last three years. Luckily, I've won twice. But, <laughs> but, but my comment to them was, I don't care about trophies. How can we get the money back to Bay County? So yesterday, they bought me a check for $500 to kick off the 4-H, and I think I called Emily, and she thought I was going to scold her. <laughs> I, I said, no, this is something good, good news. So she was came in kind of surprised. That's awesome. It, it helped me $500, I think, and I'm going to take it to the Grand Review Committee, and then we'll have a presentation after that meeting. Yeah, and, I'll, and I can share, I, you know, I'll, we'll, okay. I'll share a lot more than when we about accept that. <laughs> okay, thank you, Emily. Okay, anybody else want citizens' comments? If not, uh, we're going to move on because it's not 9.15 yet. Uh, let's move on to item 10, Presentation Enterprise and Leasing Company. Please state your name for the record. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Mike Sosa. I'm with Enterprise Fleet Management. And... You may be familiar with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. We are a sister division of Enterprise Rent-A-Car. And uh, got a brief overview of what we do and who we work with, and uh, also a, a brief synopsis that we put together for the county with regard to your uh, light, medium-duty, uh, non-sheriff's department fleet of vehicles. So just briefly here, these are some of the folks that we work with in the government space. Um, in the area, we work with Webb County, we work with the County of Gillespie, County of Hidalgo, and a number of other folks in the government space. And what we've been able to do for these folks is, as a company, we operate 2 million vehicles worldwide. Uh, that makes us the largest owner-operator of vehicles in the world. And we leverage our buying power and our expertise to implement 
good proactive replacement plans uh, for these folks and for a lot of commercial clients as well, um, while reducing their costs and reducing the time spent uh, for their vehicles. And the synopsis that we put together for <coughs> we evaluated a, a number of uh, different things here, and I'm sorry if it's a little hard to see, but the current state of, of your white fleet as it is today, there's about 78% of your current light, medium duty vehicles are older than 10 years old. Um, the average age of your fleet is roughly 15 years old. And the reason we've uh, put this together is a number of reasons. Your older vehicles have higher operating costs. And we see this all the time in the government space. Um, unfortunately, you know, light, medium duty vehicles aren't uh, usually a big priority. Uh, however, they do come with a lot of costs on the operational side and they come with a lot of downtime um, and tend to be unreliable. So in the plan through enterprise, what we've really identified here is putting in place an effective vehicle life cycle like we've done for many of our other government clients um, that will, over the span of 10 years, create a conservative savings of roughly $225,000. And I'll, I'll get to the specifics behind that here shortly. Uh, what it's also going to do is shorten your current vehicle cycle from 22 and a half years, uh, which is the time a vehicle comes into your fleet to the time that it actually gets out of your fleet. And we're going to reduce that down to a proposed five-year replacement plan. Under this plan as well, we expect to fix your average maintenance cost at $43 per month, as opposed to an industry average today of about $145 per month per vehicle. So that would actually equal roughly $62,000 in annual maintenance savings once all vehicles are under this plan. Um, there's an anticipated reduction of fuel expense um, in accordance with federal CAFE standards, which are government fuel uh, economy standards. And then the overall impact there is, you know, you've got safer vehicles, they're more reliable, they're newer, you're capitalizing on increased fuel efficiency technology and safety. Um, uh, safety features. 34 vehicles today predate analog brake standardization, which was introduced in 2007. And 40 vehicles today uh, out of 51 actually predate electronic stability control. Um, Long-term sustainability, enterprise, we're, we're, we're local, so everybody that works with us has an assigned account management team. So what really separates us uh, from others in the, in, in the industry is we don't just deliver vehicles and see you the next time that you need vehicles. With ongoing um, we handle account, account maintenance, account uh, implementation, rollouts, everything. Uh, and I'll dive into that a little bit more as we go along. Are there any questions before I, I, I move off of this slide here? So I mentioned Enterprise as a company. This is really just a visual representation of everything that we provide. Most of our government clients partner with us for three main reasons, uh, vehicle acquisition and the funding, those kind of go hand in hand, and our, our maintenance programs. Uh, but we do also offer fuel, fuel car programs. We resell vehicles for our clients. Uh, we've got competitive advantages in all of these areas because we have a, a nationwide network that we utilize. Um, we can coordinate aftermarket vehicle customization. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get down the line and maybe talk, you know, talk about sheriff's uh, department vehicles. Tax title and license registration, everything that comes along with the title of the vehicle we administer, driver safety programs, risk management, telematics, it really does run the gamut. Now this is a cafeteria style program, so whatever works best for the county uh, is what we're looking to tailor this proposal to. Um, I don't expect what works for one county to work specifically for you. Everybody has their own challenges. So we looked at the actual fleet for the County of Alberta today, and it's a little bit hard to read, but um, the fleet profile we put together focuses on 51 vehicles that are in a light, medium duty uh, niche. These are vehicles that are under class six vehicles for non-CDL. Um, so we've got a lot of the precincts and county departments involved here. Of these 51 vehicles, uh, again, 40 of these vehicles are over 10 years old. And you've got a number of vehicles here that are actually older than 25 years. I'm sorry, 20 years. Um, almost 20 vehicles are old, older than 20 years. I'm sorry, 
How many vehicles and how many are older than 20 years? So there's 51 vehicles in fleet today, and there's roughly 18 vehicles that are older than 20 years. And older than 10? And older than 10 is 40 vehicles of those 51. Now we broke down a number of um, a number of key metrics here. So one is the average age, which I discussed earlier. The average age is about 15 years. The average annual mileage is roughly 8,400 miles per year that these vehicles are traveling. You do have some more, uh, some that are doing more, some that are doing less. And we took these parameters and put together some replacement criteria. <coughs> it's a little hard to see up here. So we use that criteria to put together a fleet replacement schedule. And in the first year, we've identified 23 vehicles that we would recommend for immediate replacement. This is based on the vehicle being older than 10 years or with an odometer over 100,000 miles. In year two of the plan, we're recommending an additional five for replacement. In year three of the plan, an additional five. In year four of the plan, an additional seven. And in the final year of the plan, the last six vehicles. There are five vehicles that we've currently categorized as underutilized. These are vehicles that are doing less than 2,000 miles per year. So they could be spares, they could be highly specialized units. Um, that would be a, a part of the conversation to have going forward as well. Um, a, a few things here with regard to cost savings opportunities. In the vehicle types over here, you can see there's a number of different configurations for pickup trucks, for SUVs, for sedans. There, we would really want to sit down with the county and help streamline this uh, when it comes to the types of vehicles that you're running. Uh, we evaluate all makes and models based on a total cost of ownership basis. Uh, we're unbiased when it comes to what makes and models you're running, but it's, a, it's, it's our responsibility to provide the financial proofing behind those. Um, and then really identifying what the application is for the vehicle to identify the right type of vehicle to run. So what I mean by that is I've encountered some instances where uh, a county department may be using a large SUV to run mail back and forth. It's probably not the best use of that vehicle. Um, you know, you may want to look at something that's much more fuel efficient, something that's going to fit one person a little bit of mail. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we would certainly want to right type these vehicles uh, where we can. And then standardization, you've got some 4x2s here, 4x4s, crew cabs versus regular cabs. You know, can we standardize that and really create one efficient spec uh, of vehicle for the county? Any questions here on the fleet profile? The last thing I really wanted to point out was these vehicles down here, all the vehicles that are 10 years or older, these are the ones that are costing the most money when it comes to the operational side of your fuel and your maintenance. And when it comes to vehicle resale, it's almost non-existent for these vehicles because they are so old and have so many miles. So what we're trying to do here is really streamline this acquisition process so you don't have these peaks here. And for future acquisitions, it's, it's very streamlined. Can you get us copies of those figures? Yes, of course, course, of course. Now the financial analysis, and I do have, I apologize, this would have been helpful at the beginning. Yeah. Have a couple of these handy so you can see the numbers here. Roger. So what we did here is we took that fleet profile from the previous page and plugged it into a financial analysis to give you an idea of what dollars and cents would look like in a plan with enterprise. So at the top here, we're using the criteria from the last page. There's 51 vehicles. The current cycle today is 25 vehicles, so from the time a vehicle comes in to the time it leaves the fleet. Current maintenance number based on industry average is $145 per month per vehicle to maintain. Fleet growth, we're anticipating a reduction in your fleet due to under, underutilized units. So fleet growth would actually be a uh, sign up negative. Annual miles that we're using is a little increased because we don't have those underutilized units. So it's 9,300 miles uh, that we're using for this basis here. 
the average miles per gallon, <coughs> we're estimating about 10 miles per gallon per vehicle uh, in, in the current fleet. And then over on the right here, we have uh, the, the uh, new numbers for a proposed plan. 46 vehicles in fleet replacing every five years. Your average maintenance cost would be $43.11 per vehicle per month, as opposed to that $145. And then price per gallon we're using for this analysis is $2.40. So we plug that all into this yellow bar you see running across the top here to give you an idea of what an average budget year for the County of Alberta looks like. You have 51 vehicles today. On average, you're purchasing about two vehicles per year. That's, that's taking your 51 and dividing it out over that fleet profile. So to purchase two vehicles in today's market, it's roughly $56,000 in today's dollars. To maintain all 51 of your vehicles, it's costing roughly $88,000. And to fuel all 51 vehicles based on $2.40 a gallon, it's costing about $102,000. Yes. Mr. Smith, I had to interrupt you. We can come back after we do what we sure. have. Uh, <clears throat> we have a public hearing at 9.15. Of course. Let me do that, and then we'll come back. Yes. We can finish up the presentation. Sorry about that. That's no, no, no. Okay. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Time is now 9.15. Uh, public hearing regarding the replant of remainder of Lot 2, Chaparral Estate Subdivision in Del Rio. Uh, so here is now open. Anyone, anyone want to speak for or against the replanting? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank for an average year is roughly $250,000, $248,000. So that's to purchase any vehicles in an average year, maintain all of your vehicles in that year, and fuel all of your vehicles. Yes. I'm sorry. Does that include the Sheriff's Department's vehicles? No. This is only the 51 vehicles for the, for the, for the white fleet. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And so in a plan through enterprise, we took that fleet replacement schedule from the previous page and plugged it in to show you the, the first five years and, and, and really the, the second five years. In the first year with enterprise, we're recommending that you replace 23 vehicles. Uh, these are the oldest vehicles with the most mileage on them that are probably costing you the most in the operational side. To lease those 23 vehicles, it would cost the county $120,000 for the year. The maintenance expense overall comes down drastically because now you have a fixed and budgeted maintenance program associated with these vehicles and you have your oldest vehicles out of your fleet. So you're not paying to maintain those anymore. So your maintenance cost actually comes down to roughly 56,000, or I'm sorry, $58,000. The estimated surplus here, we're showing a negative $20,000 surplus. That's just based on you taking the 23 vehicles you own today and selling those. So those are basically the, the, the resale proceeds associated with those vehicles. And then to fuel all of your vehicles, we're estimating $87,000 uh, to fuel all 51 vehicles. So your fleet budget in that first year is almost unchanged, about $246,000, giving you a net cash position of, of $1,100. We follow this year over year until all vehicles are under the enterprise plan. Um, and over a 10-year period, we're estimating a conservative savings of $225,000 with an average sustainable savings of $15,000. The average sustainable sa uh, savings is really just your long-term, year-over-year savings compared to what the plan looks like today. I know there's a lot of numbers up here that are a little hard to see. Uh, the, I got a question. Yes, please. The 23 vehicles that we bring, if we were to do this, the 23 vehicles that we bring in, mm -hmm. um, what type of maintenance would we have to do on them? Is, it, is, it, is the $120,000 cover the maintenance on those vehicles, or how does this work? So the, the $120,000 is just the lease cost, the mm -hmm. cost for the vehicle. The maintenance cost is still blended into your overall maintenance number. That's the 50 some thousand that you're Correct. Correct. Okay. 
but we, we anticipate that it's roughly $43.11 per vehicle per month. That's a fixed cost for the county. Um, if you have a vehicle that needs transmission work, engine work, um, you know, it covers all of your preventative and non-preventative maintenance. Uh, so oil changes, lube, uh, you know, changes, uh, that's all fixed into that monthly rate. And to give you an idea of the vehicles that we've identified for replacement, I have those listed on the next page of that package that I handed to you. So we have a number of vehicles for Precinct 2, actually for, for all the precincts we've got a few of them in there. Uh, parks, fairground, district attorney, risk management. So uh, we've identified the, the specific makes and models of vehicle. Uh, really, the next step here would be for us to have a conversation with the county um, and, and possibly the departments to find out if you were to replace these vehicles, would you be doing a like for like replacement or would there be some sort of refinement there uh, with regard to make and model of that particular vehicle? So that's the end of this packet here. There aren't any questions. Let's go back to that first page. What is yes. what are those numbers? What would those numbers be? Uh, one B. One B. So coming back to this For financial. Sure. Yeah. Coming back to this financial analysis here. Correct. So if we just took the lease cost of one twenty one. 489 and divided that by 23. The average annual cost of one vehicle is uh, $5,282 here. Okay. Uh, of course, that's the subject to change based the on. The second what part of his, when he was asking the question, he said, mentioned share. Mm -hmm. And that would be the cost. On a sheriff's vehicle? Sheriff's vehicle. On a sheriff's vehicle? Sheriff's vehicle. Starting out. Yes, we, we would need to revisit that. Uh, the reason that we don't have an analysis for the sheriff's vehicles is because they're highly specialized. So depending on what type of equipment needs to be on that vehicle and what the actual vehicle is, it could be a sedan or it could be an F-150 or a Chevy Tahoe, um, it, it would change that number drastically. There hasn't been an analysis on the sheriff. This is only the regular fleet. Mm -hmm. The sheriff's part is still being looked at. Yes. Sir, on a <clears throat> pro rod basis, how do we compare to uh, counties that are similarly uh, situated? As far as uh, what the current fleet situation is? Right, exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's not uncommon. The cycle time that you have today is a little bit more extended than what we see. To give you an example, uh, County of Gillespie, they have uh, a little more than 30 vehicles in their fleet. And when we first sat down with them, their average cycle time was 16 years. And we were able to bring that down to a five-year replacement uh, plan uh, with a 10-year cost savings of roughly $70,000. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Did that, did that answer you? No, it can't be. Okay. I, I just want to make sure that we're not... Uh, from a, from, from a, 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 yeah, from a, a, an age standpoint, the fleet standpoint, it, you're not in an uncommon situation. We encounter this quite often in the government space. Um, the analysis that I'm presenting here, the, the purpose of this really today is to, to prove out the concept of this analysis. There's still quite a bit that would need to be uh, drilled into as far as what vehicles you're going to be replacing. Um, to, to give you hard dollars and cents. This is really to, to give you an idea of today you're purchasing vehicles reactively or sometimes not at all, just doing away with that vehicle. If you were to get into a proactive replacement cycle uh, to provide newer vehicles with less maintenance, less downtime, less fuel, and it's not costing the county any more money, is this worth exploring further? And that's what we've, what we've come across for a lot of our government clients. Okay. Any other questions from Mr. Sisson? Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, next, discuss the possible action regarding the release of funds and certification form, uh, form 7015.15 from Beverly County, requesting the release of funds for Beverly County, 7218075 in the amount of $500,000. <coughs> Joe, all this is in consideration here to request in TDA to release a only construction fund grant in the amount of $500,000. The county's gone through the environmental review process. They've uh, gone through the statutory 15 day comment period, which ended yesterday. They said today is the day that they can actually sign off on this and request TDA to actually allow the county to use a $500,000. Pony construction fund grant. <clears throat> you may recall these funds are prioritized for San Felipe pastures and Rancho Del Rio and Escondido. Motion to approve. We need uh, uh, the judge to sign it. Or anything? Yeah. The judge, does he need to sign this? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, second. Second. Give the judge authority. Okay, there's a motion and a second. <laughs> Any more questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, rule body 5 0. The next discuss cost action to transfer 7,000 from the building repairs amount to 11, 11, 12, 20, 37, 16, 30, 16, to repairs account, 11, 11, 20, 20, 30, 16, 4, 90, for the purpose of replenishing funds at the end of year, year 2018. And this is just because we've been doing a lot more repairs than, than were anticipated, <coughs> and we're we have that money. We're just trying to make it different. Motion account. to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Not all those in favor. Indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Nobody. Okay. Item 13. Discuss possible action to approve the 2018 self-help Colonia self-help uh, center housing assistance guidance and public health service. Activities, policies, and procedures. Move. So move. Second. Second. Any questions and discussion? Judge, uh, request authority for you to sign the last page of the housing authority guidelines if that's necessary. It will require your signature. Okay. Motion and uh, amend the motion to allow the judge sign. Second, accept. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Any other questions? Not all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, move by 5 0. Thank you. Uh, next, item 14, discuss cross back in the room. Imposition of optional fees for calendar year 2019, county road and bridges, section 502.401, amount of $10. I make a motion to approve the $10 for county road and bridge fee. Second. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? That all those in favor, Nikki, by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. nobody, 5 0. Item 15, discuss plus action. <coughs> To approve transfer deeds for tanks and water systems in this Columbia State from Delberti County to the City of Del Rio. I would like to make a motion for the for the Commissioner's Court to approve the transfer of the tanks and water system in this Columbia to the City of Del Rio. Move a second. There's a motion and a second. Any question, discussion? Not all those in favor. Indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nobody five <coughs> zero. Item 16, discuss cost question regarding approaching the city of Del Rio about transferring the property of Jesse Cardinal Road to Belverde County for possible use of road, office, yard, and storage for precinct one. I'd like to make that motion, please. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. No. If I, all those opposed, nobody. <coughs> I do. Our next one is for item 17, discuss plus action regarding the budget amendment for the advertising line item, an additional $4,000 to be required to fund anticipated any quarter expenses. I had, I had brought this line item up uh, a couple of meetings ago, but uh, we did have um, two publications that, that probably range about $1,500 a piece. It's a full page ad, English and Spanish, and it's for the... Uh, for the um, for two of the grants that needed the public notices for the release of funds and also for the 100 year floodplain. So I've got one more grant that I've got to publish that runs about that much money. Doesn't the grant reimburse us? But doesn't the grant reimburse us for that cost? 
So therefore, we still have the bids to come up, and we're at. Uh, you got all your budget stuff, still. And we still got all the budget stuff. That's why I'm, I was asking for four thousand. And where's the four thousand coming from? We're not getting it. Motion to approve. Sir, so take them. There's a motion and a second, Commissioner Owens. Any more discussion or question? If not, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nobody by zero. Item 18, discuss plus action regarding the copier contract with the Sheriff's Office. Um, we have their $473.10 uh, per month is the current with the um, with the color copies at 4,000 that are included. So the new one would actually um, would be $371.90 with actual use numbers, which is about 2,000 of the color, color copies. That's basically what, what, uh, what we're using today. And that, that contract would be closer to actual use. And then you have one where you could pay for Whatever color copies that you made, you would pay on the side. Of it. So, so what are you saying? Do you have 371? Then? Yeah, 371 looks like it's more appropriate for for that. Like a motion to approve the uh, 371 dollars per month. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Not all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Uh, Not all those opposed. <coughs> Nobody five zero. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. All right, item 19. Discuss plus fraction for a budget amendment transferring $55.50 from the copier line item to $55.50 from the maintenance line item to account uh, for the FCH agent Rachel Rodriguez from Angel Travel to FCH Agents National Conference in San Antonio. Can we just take all three of these at the same time and all transfer them first? No. <laughs> I mean, yes, you can take them at the same time, but they're not all transferred, I don't think. Yeah, but we're going to either, it's either going to transfer out of your line items or out of the contingents <coughs> if they're all travel line items. So you want to take all three? Yeah, I would be nice. Item 20, discuss plus plus regarding the $400 in additional travel for the account of 11, 12, uh, 111, 12, 17, 30, 16, 203 for FCH agent Rachel. Rodriguez for travel, of early career agent training in Big Spring, Texas, and District 6 program planning and District 6 administration and 4-H meeting in Fort Stockton. And item 21, discuss the possible requesting 1,000 for additional travel <coughs> funds for the county 11, <coughs> 1, 11, 12, 17, 30, 16, uh, 202 for A, R, A, and R agent family ran for travel to the state there of Texas with Valverde County. 4-H families and District 6 program planning and District 6 administration and 4-H meetings and 4 staff. Damn, that's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what the, the judge's secretary told me was she, Y'all are going to hate me. I'm going to have to figure out how to simplify that. No, nobody Sorry, hates you. Don't let me say that. <laughs> <laughs> I need more money. Um, <laughs> and I know that that's what that, a lot of that sounds like is I need more money. But I really want to tell you all today uh, why and why that that's probably the most important part of my job. As a county agent, I have the opportunity to impact young people's lives through the 4-H program by giving them learning experiences. And a lot of those learning experiences happen outside this county. And those are learning experiences that they may not get if we don't help them. Um, there are so many kids probably in this county who have never gone to San Antonio or gone to even the Sonora may not ever take a college visit in their life. And through 4-H, through contests and different experiences, we take those kids all the time to see different universities. This summer we went to A&M and San Angelo. And so those are two new universities that a lot of those kids have never seen before. Um, several statistics for you about what 4-H does. 4-H kids are 2.3 times more likely to be physically active two times more likely to go to college, and 3.4 times to be more involved in their community. So I want, I understand, ask, and I, I don't want to ask for more money. I don't. But I want to be able to give these kids the unique experiences that 4-H can go give ahead them. And, uh, no, 
Yeah, make a motion. Yeah. Mind. She gets angry, and she can have me crying. <laughs> <laughs> is this going to be enough to finish the year? You're sure? It's going to. We... No, I mean, this is your chance to ask the question. Is it enough to finish the year? Realistically, probably I'm going to have to pull some out of my own pocket to finish the year. But how I just want to ask need, for more. How much do you need to finish the year and go do what needs to get done? So you're asking for. 1400 1455 50. 1455 well a 5550 you're just moving for your I'm own just account. moving for my own account so <coughs> asking 1400 I'll make a motion to allow make out a, of a motion or no no he, he I said need to make a motion <laughs> I'll make a motion to move from uh, contingency to travel and training in the uh, ag extension office the amount of 2000 dollars second there's a motion and a second. I've got a question. What is the participation on the, the children, the kids on these trips? <clears throat> um, so these currently right here that I'm asking for more money on, um, they are very minimal because these are at the end of their year. These are our program conferences that we have to go to to plan for the year for um, the district office. What we did this summer was what took a lot of our money. So we would take, um, I took eight third income, incoming and very young 4-Hers, so third through fifth grade, to 4-H camp in Brownwood for a week. Um, we took four kids to senior leadership lab in San Angelo, and we took eight or nine kids to um, junior leadership lab, and then we took, had over... 12 kids participate in the state round in College Station. Um, and I've, a, a lot of times as an ag teacher and in my profession, I've always been questioned, well, is it worth taking one kid in that expense? Um, and that's a tough question for me as an extension agent and as an ag teacher it was too. <coughs> and to me, when we look at how many kids are going and what it is, um, it's hard to decide that if this is a great learning opportunity but there's only one kid going, um, it's hard for me to be the person to say, well, you don't deserve my time or money because who gets, you know. That that's my sense? question. How do you pick the, the kids and, that are going to go? I mean, how many do you have and well, how many do you take? It, it, it is open to everyone. <clears throat> well, I know, Forrest. but how do you make that decision? I mean, who are you taking? Oh, the ones that apply. The ones, the ones that want to go. go. I'll take anybody as long as they meet those specific, like senior leadership. How many members do you have? We, oh, that's a good question. Um. 151 that's, that's my question. Who do you pick to go it, from those 150? They, is the invitation open to it's all a, it's of them and only nine of them want to go? Yes, it's an invitation open to everyone. And um, I think that the opportunities, um, the children who are take advantage of these opportunities will only increase for years to come as we become more involved. Um, it's Bottom line is you had over 150 kids. With the numbers that you just threw out, there's over 32, 35 kids that just over the summer that you've helped directly. Yes, and, and I think that that will grow and continue to grow. Uh, and that's and part of, like, specifically my budget was used before I was here. Mm -hmm. And so those a lot of those kids, um, I can't quote exact numbers because that was the, my predecessor. Um, but I... I, I've seen lots of kids who would not have the same opportunities and the network of people that they've met in this industry. I, I would like to see more kids going, more kids participating. And, and you know, the, the money, if it's needed, extra money, I mean, I'm, I'm more than sure the court would, would approve of it. And it's a big issue because a lot of these kids that want to go, some of these costs are out of their own pockets. I mean, they, we pay for part of the travel, but there is some expense that these kids have and some of their families can't afford it. And maybe that's something we can and work on. And Mr. Nettleton, actually, the only cost that y'all pay for is to help me go. Lots of times our families pay their own way, or if they need sponsorships, we take that out of the general 4-H account that we fundraise for. So you're not necessarily paying directly for the kids. You're helping me get there and make those experiences with them. Because the difference between me taking them or their parents taking them is, um, let's say they take them to the rule judging comments. Mm -hmm. Well, that parent may not know that professor or the lead 4-H specialist that that kid then gets to meet because we all go to lunch and they meet maybe their freshman level ag science professor. <coughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I have an issue with that. Uh, 
in, in terms of payment, uh, if people are paying out of out of their pockets, they no longer become, uh, I suppose, covered by the county. And you mentioned or joked earlier that you are paying out of pocket. If you do that, you become personally liable, and you make the county personally, not personally, but, but but liable as well. So I want every sort of action that is, I guess, taken under. Uh, this action to to be covered by the county's uh, insurance. Right. <coughs> okay, right. And my one question to you is, through Texas 4-H, as an enrolled volunteer, which I have to be, and the kids do, they are covered under the 4-H system. Right, I understand. But if you spend your personal funds in, in furtherance of whatever goal you have, you might divorce yourself from, from that fund, and that's what I'm concerned about. So everything must be paid by the county for reasonably. And you know what? Um, <coughs> you can have that discussion with her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, maybe we can look at some programs to help these other kids that can't afford to do some of these trips. Yes. Our, the flocking fundraiser that was so fun, mm -hmm. um, a lot of our officers donated money back that they and, and got. You, you had one commissioner extend how much more money you want, then you had another commissioner say we need to do more, so... Well, I appreciate it. And we, your proposal. We will keep we will keep going forward, and um, I, I can't tell you all the support that y'all had for us has been unwavering these first few months, and I just I'm so happy to be in Delbury County, guys. So. Emily, is there an age limit on taking these kids out of the county? I've got a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I take anyone as an approved volunteer. Um, they do have to go through the 4-H Connect system. That shouldn't be a problem. And what I will would it take to take it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to get rid of it. I will truly recruit help next year when I go to the 4-H camp with those. Uh, in that case, I graders. vote yes on this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nobody, 5 0. Thank you. Uh, Matt wants me to tell y'all that y'all did save money because we reduced our salaries input, and so you saved a little bit of money to help put um, into the travel. Okay. Thank, thank you. I'm excited about that. So. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Don't worry. We'll spend Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right. Next item 22, discuss cross pressure regarding authorization to accept a donation of the amount of $50 from Ms. Sarah Boston donation to be deposited in the reserve Move. account. Second. There's a motion and a second. <coughs> All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nobody 5-0. Mm -hmm. Item 23, discuss cross pressure. Uh, authorizing the Sheriff Joe Frank Martinez to transfer $10,000 from the software maintenance at line item to travel and train line item. I thought we increased the software maintenance last year because we needed more money. Uh, we put more money uh, you bust up some money that you took off of the, of yeah, because the line item we needed it put for, it in there. Yes. We said we needed it for something that we did. I don't know what it was. It was a but we did, yeah. But we did move more money in there. Yeah. Now so we didn't need the ten thousand. You have enough left as well. We we got by it with the, the funds that we had, but we, we were falling short in the travel and training to finish out the year. And that gives us an additional five thousand in travel training to finish out the year. An additional five. But you no, 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 I mean that that will get us through the year. Yeah, you're digging so over. Yeah. <laughs> We're good. Motion approved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any more questions? If not, also, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank Nobody? You. Five zero. Thank you. So we can reduce 10000 out of software maintenance. Right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, next. If the budget passes, some of this voice and stuff is going to save a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, next, <clears throat> item 24, discuss cost question regarding the recommendation of County Investment Committee to use <clears throat> of INS funds. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, yeah. Judge, uh, a couple weeks ago, the County Investment Committee met and discussed about some return CDs that we had coming up to cast them out or liquidate them uh, and use them on some debt, to pay off some debt. I'll have Matt explain the rest. So um, all we need is action on approving that those funds. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was like we had some CDs rolled over, and instead of uh, getting the CDs again, we're going to use the cash to facilitate some debt. And <coughs> put the debt up. Yes. Yeah, what are you talking what about? What was the rate for the CDs? It was one cent. It was like point oh one, point oh one, or something. Yeah. 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 But much into a firm. It's an INS fund. It's interest and sinking fund. It doesn't stand for interest and savings account. Why? Why go there? There's a motion. What was the term on those CDs? Those are one year. No point. Okay. There's a motion. I need a second. 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 Commissioner Torres. Any more discussion? If not, all those in favor, they can by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nobody? Aye. Zero. The treasurer's report is only a preliminary report. It's only a formality because I have to submit something to Thank you. <coughs> Item 26, Human Resource Monthly Report from July 12, 2018 to August 7, 2018. Motion to approve. Second. To motion. Item 26? Yes. Yes. Okay. There was on item F. That's actually uh, the wrong number. The wrong number should be 83.5. The letter has been sent to Juanita and uh, routed to us, and that, that what is in the payroll, 83.5. That is, that is the dollar Eight, amount. 83.5? Uh, yeah. 83,500, the okay. annual salary amount, correct. Okay. <coughs> that was at our grant. Correct. Okay. I'll amend the motion to, to or I'll amend the motion to move that to 83. Right. Second, sure. motion a second. Uh, okay, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Right. Those opposed, nobody. Five zero. <coughs> Item 27, discuss bus right on the final items. Pay, payments for purchases do not comply with purchase cost procedures from the warning. Mm -hmm. No, it should be right back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Motion. motion. Need a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Not all those in favor, they can by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nobody? Thank you. Five zero. <coughs> Next budget amendment to fund remainder of this fiscal year transfers. Six thousand fifty dollars from the contingency in order for grant grant administration. Correct. Our this is what our funds are going to have to be at to facilitate the bills. Okay. Mark, what do you mean? Second. What do you mean? The grants. The grant administrator. Correct. I hope all that money came out of grants. No, not all of it. Not all of it. Not all of it. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Not all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nobody. Five zero. Item 28, monthly county audit report. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions? Not all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nobody. Five zero. Do we need to go to executive session now? Yes. Okay. We're not going to exact the session pursuant to government code, Texas 551.071, parenthesis 2. <coughs> 30, approval of subdivision class. We do have one, right, Ryan? Yeah. <coughs> Just the one the hearing was on? <coughs> no, this is just the This one was a piece of land that's never been plotted before. So um, it's establishing lots one, two, and three in trio subdivision. I'm abstaining from voting on this one, Judge. Okay. Why? It's a okay. 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 I need a motion. Motion to approve. Motion and second second. compliance. Right? Second. It's in compliance. Yes. Yes. yes sir. Okay. There's a motion. A second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Four and one abstention. Thank you. Aye. Next. Any certificates compliance? Two. Sir, did no, this? sir. Okay. <coughs> uh, I need a motion to approve the monthly So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor, they keep by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nobody. Item 33, approval of uh, approved bills payment. Yeah, there was one in your packet. <coughs> there, there's one bill in your yeah. packet. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
we need to approve that that's presently outside of our county software. So we followed the PO process, and now here's the bill here for your approval. So we can forward to the treasurer for payment. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Commissioner Wardlaw. Any the questions? If not, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Uh, aye. All those opposed? Nobody? I have 34. County Judge Thomas. What I'm going to comment is I would like for everybody to keep in their prayers Mr. Cerny, who is going to go into operation this morning. Keep him in your prayers. Hope everything turns out all right. And hope to get him back here as soon as we can to give him a, a good uh, sound off. Other than that, anybody else? If not, then this meeting is adjourned.